Welcome back to episode three of the Double Down podcast presented by Waterwave. Today is Friday, September 30th, and we have a special guest with me here in the studio. The Roseau High School alum, a four-star recruit according to ESPN, the 98th ranked player in the class with 19th point guard, a three-time All-State honoree, including her junior season where she averaged 31 points, seven rebounds, six steals, and six assists per game. She had been on varsity since seventh grade, scoring over 2,000 points in her career. An inspiring guest that I'm very excited to have with me here in the studio, my friend, Katie Bravich. Appreciate you for having me. Yes, well, let's start with that. 31, seven, six, and six, Katie B. 31, seven, six, and six, it was that easy or what? I mean, competition wasn't too good, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny, that's funny. But yeah, let's start uh, even back to like your beginning of varsity. When did you know, like, growing up that you were going to have the possibility to, like, be a varsity basketball player when you're in seventh grade? Because that's not a very common thing, you know? I mean, I had two older sisters, and they both played up, too. So seeing them and being able to play with them when I was younger, yeah. I mean, I thought I was better than them. So I was <laughs> like, if they can play up early, then I got that chance, too. So. I love it. I love it. I have a younger brother um, and, you know, just competing, like, every day with them, like, whether it's shooting drills or, like, mm -hmm. in the yard. Like, I remember growing up, like, I would never want my little brother to beat them, uh, beat me, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you were the same way where you like, you wanted to beat your older siblings. Oh, 100%, you know? yeah. every single time. Every time. No, that's that's like, I grew up on that stuff. Like, shout out Brody, you know, we, we just played in the yard all the time. So yeah, all that stuff. But um, high school basketball, uh, take us through kind of like a short kind of story about your high school career. Like what kind of like inspired you to be a basketball player? Uh, what inspired you to like, be a good basketball player because you know a lot of times in high school I see kids that you know they like the sport and you know they play it during the season but it isn't like their main focus obviously basketball is the main focus for you like why is that like why do you love the game I mean both my parents coached me growing up mm -hmm. I mean I started before kindergarten honestly playing up with my sisters and they coached me throughout and I guess they wouldn't let me yeah. get bad mm -hmm. and so they pushed me so I believed in myself that I could I mean, make it to a higher level, but really just my sisters pushing me and believing in me because, I mean, if they didn't, I mean, because you ain't got a lot of people in high school other than your siblings. If you ain't got siblings, I mean, yeah, that's a rough, rough out there for you, but. No, I, I agree. I think I'm kind of the same way with my family, my brother, you know, pushing me and, uh, you know, making me get better. But uh, unfortunately me, I never had a chance to even go to state as a basketball player. You went three times. Three times. Three times. Three times. Okay. And state semifinals or how, how, how far did you get? We got state one year, okay. state semifinals twice. Okay. Okay. What was state championship like? Like, what was that feeling? Was that like the best, like oh best championship gosh. feeling out of all of them? That was absolutely amazing. So I won it with both of my sisters. Oh, fun. And that had to be one of the most amazing experiences you know like in classes like they'll be like okay like say an experience that has shaped you mm -hmm. I always write that down okay. winning state yeah. my eighth grade year with both of my sisters any specific reason like that comes to your head when you talk about like you know something that shaped you was it like something happened in the game or the way you played or like what like moment because I you know for me as a basketball player you remember the moments more than you remember like the wins and the losses yep. and the scores like were there a specific moment or like just hugging your parents after the game like what was that you know no it was very specific so right after the game so okay actually it was probably one minute left all of us starters got subbed out of the game so it was me and both my sisters mm -hmm. we're all hugging everyone throughout the line because we're up by like 20 so obviously we knew we were going to win it and so we all get down to the end of the line and me and my sisters we just look at each other and we all go in for this big group hug, and it's a saved photo I have in my room wherever I go, you know, high school growing up into yeah. college now. And that is, like, we're all crying, mm -hmm. and best experience of my life. Yeah, no, that's, I even get the chills thinking about, like, you know, subbing out early and, mm -hmm. and the hugs, and everybody's cheering, and, like, you just feel on top of the world. Like, I won four conference championships, and every year was kind of the same way, you know, like, coming down, it's like hugging your guys and hugging your family. And like, for you, it's even more special. You got your two sisters there, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, talk about like growing up playing basketball with them. Like, obviously they pushed you, um, you know, like how did, how did that relationship like continue to help you grow and eventually like make you into a D1 basketball player? I mean, we weren't super close when we were younger, so I was super stubborn and competitive. So I wanted to be better than them. Mm -hmm. And even if they didn't 
want that yeah. or they didn't appreciate that, I still was like, I'm better than you and I'm going to get better than you. <laughs> so no matter if you like it or not, I'm going to keep pushing to be that. I love it. So, I mean, into high school, we got a little bit closer. And after that state tournament, that's definitely what I feel like brought us together as well. Yeah, like it wasn't awesome. just the moment. It was after that as well. Yeah. No, that's super cool that that moment kind of like spiraled you into like, you know, family's everything. So mm-hmm. like, you, you know, you don't usually realize it like right, right away. But like when you finally do, I think that's really special um going into recruiting when did that start for you early seventh grade eighth grade or was it more <sighs> into high school you know how did that you know small town so mm-hmm. you're not you know playing on a you know national schedule or against like the best competition in the world like how did that go for you the recruiting process I mean since I'm a small town I was in seventh grade when I was in high school mm-hmm. so I got recruited around eighth grade and it didn't really spur it up until I'd say my 10th grade junior year but I wasn't heavily recruited, like I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I mean, I got recruited by some smaller schools, D1s, um, and then Minnesota came along and you know, you grew up in Minnesota, Minnesota kid, and you're just like, yeah. I wanna be a gopher, yeah. you know? So when Did that you, offer came. Yeah, you always had that, like seventh, like even growing up, like you're like, if I could play for the gophers, that would be like, no question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Since no, high I, school. Yeah, I was the same way. You know, obviously it didn't happen for me right away, but like when it finally happened, that's like, you know, really what was, what was pretty special. Um, so yeah, let's get into um, your late stages of high school. Uh, for people that don't know, you actually left or graduated high school early, correct? Yes. And you enrolled on the 2019-2020 team, is that correct? Yes. COVID, that COVID year, Yes, right? the COVID year, yeah. Yes, okay. So you come in and you come in in what, December kind of time? Take us through like making that decision to leave high school and, and come and help the Gophers on this, you know, this season. Mm-hmm. Well, I got a FaceTime call with... Lindsay Whalen, the current head coach, and she just asked, like, okay, is this a crazy question or not? Would you want to leave high school early and come play for us? Mm-hmm. And it was COVID. You know, a lot of people are out with the vaccine, I don't think, has came out yeah, at this point, yet, whatever. Yet, yeah. So a lot of contact tracing. So I had to take three extra classes. So I was taking 10 classes for five weeks. Um, it was worth it, I promise you. Yeah. Um, so probably December like 26 right after christmas i came on campus Mm -hmm. and i guess just went from there just went from there yeah so you you come to campus and they grant you you have eligibility right away Mm -hmm. um so you come in your first game against penn state and then you face the number eight team in the country maryland Mm -hmm. and i haven't seen it but what i was told is that katie b stepped in that game and just shot a deep three and cashed it Is is this a true story I mean, I think there was two, but... Okay, 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 two threes. Two threes. Well, you had eight points in four minutes. Yep. So Lindsay subbed you in there quick, and you just you just decided, I'm, I'm going to go get some buckets. I'm going to show these people what I'm about. I mean, if you got a couple minutes left in the game, I mean, what's you can't really go wrong with taking right shots. Well. Yeah. Might as well. How were your... Take us through your, like, initial emotions. You know, going... Like, you were in high school a couple weeks ago. You were playing in Roseau, Minnesota with maybe, what, 100 people at your game? And now you're checking in at the barn in Williams Arena, Power Five, high major college basketball. Like, what was going through your head? Because I know I'd be freaking out a little bit. You know, like all the emotions, nervous. You know, excited. Mm-hmm. Like, take us through like what you remember. If there's any specific memory of that, like. I mean, I was definitely nervous. I'm like, I'm not even 18 yet. These big girls are blowing me around. Like, how am I gonna fare up? You know. But after going through a couple practices, I'm like, I got this. Mm-hmm. You know, like. I'm not that far down compared to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to keep pushing. And obviously I had nerves, but it went away fast. You know, it's like you got nerves before the game. Then once you start the game, they go away. It was a lot like that in practices too. Once you're in there, you're just hooping. Like you're just playing. It's basketball at the end of the day. You know, the competition might be a little faster, a little stronger, but you're still, you know, you're still playing basketball. Um, That season, uh, you got to play in, I think, about 15 games, something like that? I think so, yeah. Yeah. How did that that year go? Um, Were you happy you decided to come early? Were you, like, what were your emotions kind of like as that season wrapped up in in terms of, like, your future with the program? I was very happy. Um, A lot of people asked me, like, do I think I missed out on the end of the year with my seniors and everything? And especially because it was COVID, nothing was really happening, like, I think that was a huge experience for me, especially what happened yeah. um, with like my surgery and everything. But I would not take it back. Like that was one of the best decisions I've made in my life. Yeah, no, that's awesome. You know, um, so you, you finish out that year. Um, you know, we're, we're going into summer. What are what are your kind of like 
you know, what's on your mind in terms of like this next year? Um, you know, not even into summer yet, but like the season just ended, like, you know, ex- you excited to be back and be like an actual freshman again? Like, mm-hmm. you know, where's your head at there? I mean, we didn't make the tournament, mm-hmm. so I guess that was in my head. I'm just like, I got to get better to push this team so we can get to the tournament. Yeah. But I don't know. And we had all rest- or rest- returners come back. Okay. So it wasn't like, oh, like, who's going to be on this team, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're just excited. Yeah. Just excited for – I think I was, like, I was the same way. You know, I didn't play my freshman year at all because I redshirted. And I was just like – you know, even before summer came around, I was like, I was right in the gym, like the next day the season ended. Yep. You know, we've actually played in the national championship that year. And the next day that ended, like, or a couple of days after, you know, we probably, uh, we probably hung out and had a good time and celebrated, like, getting the national championship, but like being so ready to get back into it. And I think, I think that's with a lot of athletes, but it's hard too. like, you want to give yourself some time, but also like you love the game and you don't want to like get away from it. So yep. I think that's such a, such a special thing. Uh, we're going to continue uh, the interview, but we want to take a quick pause to thank Northern Chill for sponsoring the Double Down podcast. Uh, we're going to play a little ad bit from them right here, right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. We're going to take a quick break to shout out the supporters that support us to make this happen. Shout out to our sponsor, Northern Chill. It's my favorite water out there. It's a 7.8 pH level. It has calcium, magnesium, chloride, sodium, potassium, and even other minerals that help you live better. It makes you feel better, makes you live better, makes you healthy and hydrated. It's my favorite water. You can shop it online at northernchill.com. And we have an exclusive code for our podcast listeners. Code WWTV20 will give you 20% off a case of Northern Chills like you see right here. It is our favorite water over here at Water Wave, and I don't like to drink anything else. If I have to, I will, obviously, because i got to survive. But at any time of the day, I'm looking for a Northern Chill. Follow them on Instagram at drinkchillh2o as well and get with the movement. Start drinking real, real water and quit drinking that sink water, man. You know it's not good for you. I want to thank Ricky for that shout out on Northern Chill. Uh, we're going to keep this up here with the podcast. Uh, transitioning into kind of the reason why this podcast has started um, and kind of the reason why you know, you are who you are, it, you know, it shaped you, you know, my things shaped me, this unique kind of adversity. Um, take us through, you know, the summer and, um, you know, starting up last season, um, you know, you uh, obviously, you know, were had the, the procedure done in November, but take us through, like, you know, what came up to that point, like, what was going on and, and how were you feeling, like, in practice that, you know, like, that kind of experience? I mean, it came on so fast where... I mean, I was super excited for that summer, Mm -hmm. right? You come back and you're like, okay, let's see what I can do, you know, let's get the starting spot. And we're doing drills and I can't do them, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm falling over. I don't have enough balance. I'm not being able to run sprints, go up and down the court. And at that point, I was just like confused. I'm like, what is my body doing? Like, I've been like good this my whole life. I haven't had any troubles so I was more confused and upset at myself because I didn't think it was anything wrong. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was something that I was doing wrong. And that was like, you would say confused was like your kind of like where your emotions went. Because mm-hmm. like talking about like emotional stressors that we go through as, you know, student athletes and, and professional athletes, like confused is, is such a normal word, I feel like in sports, especially with like injuries and something coming up like you don't always have the answers is that kind of like where your head was that like what's going on like what's happening that was definitely what I felt especially like you know if you want to improve your game you watch film and you're okay that's what I did wrong Mm -hmm. you know I didn't have any of that you know we went to the doctor and I got some MRIs I got some x-rays and all that and still nothing showed up Mm -hmm. so I kept playing and symptoms got worse and I did end up getting more MRIs and they realized what was wrong with me but Mm -hmm. before that I was totally out of my game, headspace, yeah. like and physically. Like, yeah, physically. Like, what did you like? What did you feel like? You, you like you said you couldn't like do drills and workouts. Like, what was going on inside like your body physically that was like really happening? So it was pretty much all of my legs. I didn't have mm-hmm. anything above my waist. It was terrible balance. My legs felt heavy. Like mm-hmm. every single time I moved them, it was like ten extra pounds. I had prickly needles, like up and down throughout my whole entire leg like on the inside Mm -hmm. so it's like someone asks like oh what's wrong I'm like it's everywhere like I can't explain Mm -hmm. you know and it got to a point where I'd be sitting on the ground crying because I couldn't stand up any longer yeah you know that's yeah and and I think 
when I think about sometimes of like basketball, I get like little nicks and bruises. Was that something that you thought it was right away? Like, oh, maybe this is just something today and I got to just got to shake my legs out and get back. Or was it like you were scared from the start? I was scared from the start because really? I'm like, nothing like this has happened before. Yeah. You know, like I'm a down and dirty player. Like yeah. I get on the floor a lot. I got bruises all the time. So I was like, this is something new. Like this is nothing that I've mm-hmm. experienced before. So I. Yeah. And, and it's also so tough because, you know, I was talking to Lindsay, uh, Coach Whalen about, um, you know, I was going to start talking with her and, you know, talking about different things. And I was, you know, going to talk to her about, you know, being there for your teammates and wanting to do things right. Was that something that was like in your head too? You know, like, you know, you want to be the starting point guard, you know, this upcoming year. Like, how did you like process the, the feelings of like, you didn't let your teammates down, but I feel like as an athlete in the moment, like you feel like you're letting your teammates down. You know, is that something you felt as well? I felt like I left my teammates down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm off to the sideline, not being able to do these drills, even sprints. Like that was the worst thing where I'm yeah. just like, they hurt so much more when I do sprints or when I even scrimmage. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what do my teammates think of me that I was trying to get out of these drills, trying to get out of sprints, you know, conditioning. Yeah. Especially in such a competitive environment too, mm-hmm. where like, you know, at the end of the day, you're all friends, but I want to play your minutes and, mm-hmm. you know, she wants to play your minutes, yeah. you know? So, you know, I think that's such a, such a tough situation that I, you know, I went through as well. Um, talk about the MRIs. So if I got this correct, you first went and got one like knees down or like waist down, and then you got another one and then you ended up getting a third one before they even found anything out. Yeah. So it was waist down and there was nothing, everything looked good. And then it was pretty much middle section down okay, yeah. and then the third one was finally full body and they got my brain and everything and that's where they figured out the problem I guess yeah what what is uh what are your first emotions you know like initial like what's your first response when the doctor calls and tells you like what what they saw you know what did they see okay this might sound bad but it was almost a relief that I knew what was finally wrong with me mm-hmm. like, I don't think that's bad yeah, I mean, because you're worrying and wondering the whole time, like, what, what is going on with me, you know? And, and then you, you knew, f- and you knew something was going, you're mm-hmm. like, like, whether people believed it or not, you, KDB, you're like, I know something's Positive. wrong. Yes. Yep. Yep. Positive, something was wrong. So when I finally got those results, I'm like, thank the Lord, like, I finally know what's wrong. Mm-hmm. But I have never heard of this condition before. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, let's do our research. So it took a while to adjust to realized that something was actually wrong with me but mm-hmm. and it's chiari yes correct so chiari. for everybody that's listen chiari malformation is what you got would you say like diagnosed or yeah it's it, diagnosed or, with yeah so you talk about relief you know um what did you know about this you know malformation like did you have any idea about it like did you think like research you on WebMD or like (laughs) what was going through your head when they told you that yeah I had no idea Mm -hmm. so like once I told my parents we definitely went on Google yeah did our research but we had no idea before that no clue so like that I did my research because I had never heard of Mm -hmm. it and from my understanding was you have a normal sized brain but your skull is a little too small correct correct so basically it's kind of a more of a common thing than um, I thought, you mm-hmm. know, I looked it up and it was like 200,000 cases per year, which is the exact same as like ACL ruptures. So, um, you know, same kind of, you know, percentage rate in that kind of sense. Um, so you, so you, do they tell you you need surgery right away? Is that something they initially told you or they're like, you know, we're going to tell you about what this is and then you go decide it on your own. They advised surgery, mm-hmm. but as a basketball player, if you hear that, you're like, okay, you advise it, but like, if I got the chance to play, I'm gonna play. Yeah. So that was the plan. Mm-hmm. I planned to keep playing. Yeah. But throughout the whole summer, correct? Throughout, no, I planned to play throughout the rest of the year. Oh wow. With my symptoms and mm-hmm. everything that was going on, but then there was a rule where like, if you play within the first nine games, games yeah. and then redshirt like medically, yeah. then you can play right away. Yeah. So I was gonna try at least get in nine games. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even get. I couldn't even get that far. Yeah, so you get to probably, what, end of October-ish when you, like, kind of start to make that decision to get surgery? It was actually early October. Early October. Because I had my surgery November 1st. Yes, okay. So it was early October. Early October. And family kind of just came to a conclusion, like, obviously, you know, you're telling them, like, I can't do it without, like, we got to go get something, Mm -hmm. something fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they supported me fully. They were like, whatever you feel, because we can't even try to understand what you're feeling. Like, we have no idea. So they were just like, whatever you feel is right, 
we're going to support you. Yeah. So, yep, I told him, I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I need surgery. So that was what happened. Yeah. So take us through all emotions of surgery. You know, you know what they do. What, right? Were you nervous going into surgery? Were you excited that you get to like, get this fix? You know, what are your kind of initial... Because surgery, the word surgery is scary. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, even with two surgeries on my knees, like surgery is still scary to me. Like, was it scary to you or was it more of like, thank God I need to, you know, get this done? Oh, no, I was so nervous. I was yeah. terrified they were going to shave like my whole head off <laughs> because it was my brain, first of all. So I was terrified, yeah. skull. Yeah. But I was more scared about my hair. I'm like, I love my hair. Please don't take too much don't, off. Don't, don't take it off, please. You yeah. like pray to the doctor, like don't take too yeah. much off. So that's what they do, correct? They shave, basically shave a part out of the base of your skull. Yes. And they cut through the tissue, correct? To mm-hmm. relieve pressure to allow the fluid to flow. Yeah. So they had to, okay. So they had to open the muscles mm-hmm. and that was what was worse after, like for a recovery. Oh yeah. But they had open the muscles. They had to take off two inches of my skull and then they cut through tissue um yeah that was pretty much it so basically what my understanding was they do this to like make the cyst get smaller correct correct but mine is kind of unique where not everyone who has Kiari Mm -hmm. has a cyst okay mine I just had it for so long without receiving treatment Mm -hmm. that that cyst was there was there okay yeah okay so did it work right away? Like how did like the cyst got smaller, obviously like tell, take us through, like, obviously we'll talk about the emotional pain out of surgery and the physical pain out of surgery, but like, take us through, like, basically did it work kind of question? Yeah. So I got another MRI three months after surgery mm-hmm. and they said it went, be- went down almost half the size, oh, wow. which was great. Yeah. And then I got another one probably two months ago. And they said it's even smaller. So they said it's working and everything. So, so everything's going right. Everything's which is awesome. Good. We're super happy to hear about. But um, you get out of surgery. What are your feelings? You know, is are you obviously the anesthesia is hitting you and that kind of stuff. But you're obviously happy to be back alive because it's scary. It's brain surgery. You know, mm-hmm. like it's a, it's a big deal. Take us through like what are your first emotions that you remember or like a specific thing you remember coming out of that big surgery. Coming out of surgery. I didn't even have that relief of I'm done with surgery Mm -hmm. because I had immediate pain. Like I'm not good with anesthesia right away either. Like I realized when I got like my wisdom teeth out, like Mm -hmm. I was like throwing up and stuff. But so that on top of coming out and being in so much pain, I can't even, can't even describe it. I didn't have enough time to reflect and be like, okay, I finally got the surgery. I'm finally done. There was none of that. Yeah. And I think, for me, I think about the same kind of thing as like my first surgery just come out like, you know, vomiting because every like the anesthesia and the pills and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, your head just like you don't even have time to even think. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, it's just it it happens so slow, but it's also so fast. You know, take us through like the first couple of weeks out of surgery when you start kind of like, you know, gathering, you know, you're getting balanced, you know, you're living a somewhat more normal life. Um, you know, what are your emotions now? You're like, hey, I'm excited to get ready for what like what's next I mean I didn't have a normal life after surgery until probably month and a half Wow! because it was brain surgery Mm -hmm. I would have immense headaches Mm -hmm. I it took me probably five minutes to sit up Wow! the first month Crazy. so uh, even walking I was limited couldn't do any activities so I at that point after about two weeks i was like okay i am ready to get this show on the road mm-hmm. let me go run some laps yeah. like i was motivated stat- motivated yeah. very yeah and i think um you know i i read that you were hospitalized for what three days and then you were at your home three weeks recovering and it was that process was was slow correct mm-hmm. very yeah. slow so talk about you know for people that don't understand because we never can really fully explain explain the physical pain But, like, what kind of, like, example of, like, physical pain were you going through? Extreme headaches. Yeah. I always describe to people, like, if someone's smashing on a door, right? Like, you feel the vibrations. You can obviously hear the pounding. That's what it was, like, in my head almost 24-7. If I spoke too loud, if I bent down too far, if I walked a little farther, but that was after the two weeks the first two weeks that was literally laying down yeah anywhere like, i didn't have relief just no matter what i was doing in a dark room just mm-hmm. like 
no phone probably even too no your head probably hurt. i was sleeping that almost a full two weeks and if i wasn't sleeping i was trying to sleep because i was in so much pain mm-hmm. and is that physical pain the only thing on your mind or like because obviously it's it's immense you know i think about my you know back to my surgeries and all you think really think about is like how much your my knee hurt you know mm-hmm. is that kind of what you were going through it's just oh my everything hurt so bad or was he or did you have like other thoughts about like oh i need to get back ready for basketball or, or something like that like what was what were those initial like emotions while you're laying there not able to do anything it was pretty much all the pain yeah. i'm like i can't wait for this to subside but i did have classes to attend to oh, God. and i'm like okay i know i can't get back to um basketball for quite a while so i'm like i need to keep up with my grades and i i would say i'm a pretty good student too so i was almost more worried about that after surgery than basketball Mm -hmm. because i knew basketball that was going to be a process yeah yeah and you don't want to get behind on things either and you know all that kind of stuff um so you finally start turning the corner around late december january like when did you kind of start more like able to you know walk around and feel like yourself again I'd say mid January is when I could finally start to walk more, start mm-hmm. to run. Yeah. How did those emotions like I'm feeling normal again? I can be around my friends without having an immense headache. You know, I I can maybe start jogging a little bit without my feet tingling and being numb. Like, what were those emotions like? I was so excited. Yeah. So excited mm-hmm. after. So my recovery wasn't very long, I'd say, but it lasts. I feel like it lasted for forever and I don't know definitely just excited yeah. to get back on the court yeah. back to doing normal things like right like being around friends being too. around friends yeah I think that's such a huge thing that I've talked about already in the pod is like going through you know rehab or like the dog days of surgery is so brutal because it's like you know first of all you probably didn't even want to talk to anybody because your body hurt mm-hmm. you know i was the same way like people would like want to come see me and i'm like no like my body hurts i yep. don't, don't want to do that and it, it makes you like oh man it just like makes you really appreciate like getting back and seeing like your your friends and like mm-hmm. your teammates and um you know how did how did your team take that how did they you know obviously they missed you you know you weren't around the program you know for for a little bit there you know did they obviously happy to see you back and welcome you back in you know like Mm -hmm. what was that kind of like for you and like what you thought for them as well Mm -hmm. I mean right after surgery I got a video of all of them oh yeah sending their love and everything which I don't think they understand how much that actually meant to me Mm -hmm. um but coming back it was it was amazing having that support because you can't be on the court so you're off to the side you're doing rehab you're sitting watching practice so it was a lot of support and it was it was really awesome yeah and i think also like you know laying there um you know we talk about mental health like it sucks you know like it's so hard to to think like oh you're you know worthy to be with with your team and like you feel just so down and you just so down yourself you know did you kind of have those kind of like doubts about mental health and and you know talk about how like how really was your mental health like through the whole process oh no, yeah 100 percent at that point, I'm like, will I ever be back the same I was? Mm-hmm. Like, these symptoms, I felt almost, like, crippled to a point that, like, I couldn't function, right, normal activities. Yeah. Like, before surgery, I couldn't go to volleyball games. I couldn't go to football games. It wasn't even just activities then. Yeah. It was standing for too long, sitting for too long. Yeah. So after coming out of that, I'm like, will I ever be the same again? Yeah. So I had all those doubts. I didn't want to go out anymore because I was afraid I was going to get the, like, same symptoms yeah so you would say you know you were scared you know a lot Very scared yeah how are you able to and if maybe you you have maybe you haven't how are you able to overcome that kind of like scariness was it more just like repetition and, and you know it getting better and better or was there something that you did for your mental health or emotional health or like you know how did you kind of get over that level of being you know like you said scared I'd say it's, I'm still in that process right now, mm-hmm. figuring out how to get out of it. Yeah. I mean, I still got some symptoms, yeah. so that's tough, trying to live with that, figuring out why I'm still having symptoms. So I would definitely say I'm in the process right now, trying to figure that out, yeah. of how to push through, I guess. Yeah, and I think it's it's definitely different, but it's similar to like, you know, the, the process of, of a knee rehab, you know, it's like trying different things out and, you know, figuring out what you can and cannot do and like working. And for you, I think it's so much, it's, it's such a different process. Like, you know, for me, I lost my quad muscle. So I'm basically, you know, working to get my quad muscle back for you. It's like just learning to be yourself again. Would that, would that be kind of like something you would describe it as? I would 
definitely say that. Like, I look back on film and I'm like, okay, I played like this. Like, do I play like that still? Mm-hmm. Like, do I still have that same IQ? Yeah. But it's also like that surgery affected my nerves. So it's like you can't really see what's happening. Yeah. So if I'm having problems, I'm like, okay, something's happening. And they're like, well, you look fine. You know how hard that is on someone? <laughs> so hard. Like, I'm like, okay, so you know what's right with my body, but I don't. Yeah, especially when you, as yourself, you set standards for mm-hmm. what you want to look like on the court. You know, you obviously, we talked about your success that you had, and, and you know the level that you can play at. You know, you know how good you can, you know, you can get back to where you were, but you can even get, like, better. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, I think... You know, for me as an athlete, I, I never have a ceiling on, like, where I want to go. Is that something you even still think about today? It's, like, I can still get to this, like, next level. You know, talk to somebody that's, like, maybe going through something like that is, mm-hmm. like, you know, that, that inspiration to, like, get better. What motivates you is kind of my question. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to watch film and be like, okay, this is what I used to be, but I don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's also part of my process. But it's more of, like, I've played the game of basketball for so long that a surgery is not – gonna be the end of me like it's it's a little setback you know like there's I don't know yeah no I'm I think it's the same way and like I told myself after my first knee surgery I was like if I tear my ACL again I'm done you know and now here I am more motivated than I was Mm -hmm. you know and it's like like you said a little surgery isn't I played basketball for 20 something years you know a little Mm -hmm. surgery isn't gonna isn't gonna stop me and I I love that mindset and I think um it's such an important mindset who who keeps you who keeps you in line with that mindset is it something you can do by yourself like you're motivated enough as an individual to keep yourself in that mindset or do you rely on family friends you know how does how does that happen in your life I'd say it's definitely more myself I have my own standards Mm -hmm. and but I've gotten those standards from my parents yeah. and my siblings. Yeah, and, and and those standards, you would say, have probably aligned your whole life, you yep. know, like never settling, always motivated, and that's brought you to where where you are. Where I am today, yeah. yep. No, I think that's such a special thing, too, and I think about, you know, most of the guests that we'll have here, you know, these high-level competition athletes, none of them have a, a capacity for, like, average you know and I I, you know knowing you and seeing you know your efforts and and how you work like you can't just be average like average isn't okay it's even when you're hurt you know even when you're injured you're like okay I'm mm, something's happening right now but when I get out of this I can't just be average again you know is that something you think about because I know I think about it all the time Mm -hmm. no all the time and even when I was in rehab I'm just like okay well if someone else was in your rehab I'm probably doing better than them right yeah like I'm going through this faster like I'm gonna come back faster you know yeah. like I had that mentality the whole time even though I was scared mm-hmm. you know yeah. like you can be scared but also have that motivation yeah. for yourself which I think is so huge too because I talk about me and Zay talked about last episode like he was hurt at the same time I was and the competition that we had with one another like I'm going to get better than him today. Mm-hmm. And, and you were doing, doing that versus yourself, yep. which is even a better competition. If you're able to compete with yourself, then, you know, you're only making yourself better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, coming out of all that, let's talk about now. You know, it's 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 September. It's late September. Uh, the season starts in, you know, probably a month, a month and a half, mm-hmm. something like that. Where are you right now? not exactly where I want to be yet Mm -hmm. which is okay which is okay it's a process yes but I do still have a couple symptoms which we're working through Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's pretty much day to day how I'm feeling you know coaches are great Mm -hmm. teammates are great very supportive they're like what do you need today and I'll be there for you Mm -hmm. so that which is such a huge thing too Mm -hmm. especially when your teammates know that you're giving your best and you know you see that kind of stuff you know talking about um you know with our facilities our obviously our training room is right off of um you know the court you know so working on different things and just being around the program like i feel like teammates can really like seeing is believing type of deal where like you know you like people see katie you know working to get better they Mm want to help you get better is that something you see within your program Mm -hmm, 100 percent. like i'll see that with other teammates as well and we'll reach out to each other like they're like, I want to get better. Like, yeah. do you want to come in the gym with me? Mm-hmm. Do you want to stay after, get some shots up? Like, I need that motivation. And I'm like, I got you. You know, like all of us on the team have that. It's not like individual players. Yeah. And I think it's vital. You know, I think about like even back to my high school teams, you know, having 
whether it's a manager or a teammate or somebody that's like hitting you up or you hitting someone else up to get in the gym. You know, I used to work out at, at 6 a.m. in our high school gym and I would, you know, text my teammates like, hey, you know, let's let's get a workout. And a lot of them didn't want to get up early. But, right. you know, it's it's the thought of like somebody's thinking about me um, and wants me to get better along with them. You know, and I think a program needs that kind of from the leadership from the top down. You know, you have right. you know you have the ultimate leader in Lindsay Whalen. You know, you, she's with you every day in practice. You know, how does how does having her as a leader, you know, with your unique you know story, kind of like how does that help you every single day? Because obviously, looking at somebody in your spot where you know women's basketball, she's kind of you know at the top of women's basketball, mm-hmm. point guard. You're a point mm-hmm. guard. Like, how does having Lindsay around like really help you as an athlete, but as a person as well. Well, she just understands. She's been through it all. Even if she hasn't had my specific injury, she's had injuries. She's gone through championships. She's gone through losses, you know, like she understands. And she tells me that like, Katie, I understand like whatever you need. I got you whatever you need from us, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Like she's there. She's there. Yeah. And I think that's the the true sign of a, of a, of a real leader. You know, I think she embodies that kind of a character and I feel like, you know, you would say that you're lucky to, to have her around. Very lucky. Yeah, Very lucky. for sure. All right. So now we're thinking about, you know, let's move forward to this season. Uh, obviously day to day, it's a process. We're going through it. Do we hope to be out there this year? You hope to be supporting the teammates? Like where's, where's your mind at where you want to be? Like what's, what's going on with this upcoming year? I said standards for myself, I guess. So I don't want to be like, oh, I want to start. I want to do all this. I definitely just have the role of like, I want to be there for my teammates wherever I am, whether I'm on the court, whether I'm on the bench, Mm -hmm. you know, because every team needs that. And I'm like, I'll be that, you know, whatever my team needs. If they need more of an assist Mm -hmm. leader today, they're going to get that from me. If they need more of a score, they're going to get that. Mm -hmm. More of a defender, they're going to get that, you know, whatever. Yeah, such a great attitude to have, especially like, going through something and you know everybody not that everybody feels bad for you but you know everybody's looks out for you you know which yeah. which a caring teammate does and when you are able to not be selfish and give that back it, it so, tells so much about you as you know and your character and you know I really applaud you for that um talk about your team let's wrap up talk about the team what what are you excited about obviously you know a group of solid freshman coming in you're Mm -hmm. kind of a freshman yourself you know like uh, what are you looking forward to this year you know is it is it the wins and losses is it the relationship like what's what what is your goal for this upcoming year something I'm looking forward to is the day-to-day practices it's not even the games Mm -hmm. because I love my team so much we have a culture we have like the community like it is so much fun day-to-day and practices every day every Every single day so that is where I guess I'm looking forward to games to like see how we put all that together Mm -hmm. but goals oh tournament 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 for sure tournament for sure which is an achievable goal i Mm -hmm. believe in my mind looking at your guys's program um you know just getting better especially with younger younger you know Mm -hmm. players you know obviously they played but it's a a different jump from you know high school to college Mm -hmm. you know um talk about you know talk about that we'll kind of wrap up with that like what do you what do you think you know these your team can do you know you brought in a whole whole basically new group of of girls you know how how do you think they adjust to to the big 10 and the high level of competition how do you think like you can help that team out i think they're gonna adjust great yeah um they got great leaders on this team to help them or to support them i guess Mm -hmm. but they don't just look out for themselves either like they want to learn they want to learn from Lindsay. like first of all Lindsay, great leader yeah like you anyone can go to her for anything so we go to her you got other teammates but I think maybe some games it'll be a little bit rough we'll start out that way but then we'll get there because we got the teammates for that we got the coaches for that you know we're never going to be in too much of a slump because we're there for each other Mm -hmm. yeah no that and that's huge too from like I said mentioned earlier from the top down the program if everybody's bought in you know wins and losses they're going to come but the experience and you know, once you're able to have that true experience and trust one another, you can't you can't win a championship without that kind of you know collaboration, like connection, and and yeah, exactly. And I think even the best teams with the most talented guys, they're not going to win, or guys or girls, you know, they're not going to win unless they have leadership and they have mm-hmm. connectedness from the top down. Um, I think that's really all we have. You know, Katie, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast and telling your story. You know, I think it's 
think it's such a unique adversity um, that you faced and are still facing. And, um, you know, I think one thing that I think is really cool from your message is, you know, it's okay to not be okay, but it's, you know, you, you will still want to put that effort in and show people, you know, I think it's not even more about showing people, you know, you know, motivating yourself and getting better every single day. And, um, you know, maybe it's not perfect and it's okay for it to be not, not be perfect. So thank you, Katie B for coming on the podcast. We're so excited to cheer you and your teammates on this year. Um, and with that, it's been Parker Fox, Katie B and we are out. Peace. Thank you.